previously on All Things Unexplained. He's here to help us talk about a subject that is near and dear to my heart, maybe something that I know nothing about, even though I grew up with it, that I paid no attention to, even though it was in my backyard. We are talking about the Air Force, along with Northrop Grumman, unveiling the B-21 Raider. A job with, between the Las Vegas FBI and the Air Force OSI, the Office of Special Investigations, raided all the properties of the operator of the Dreamland Resort website, mind you. What? Coordination between the FBI and the Air Force OSI, Office of Special Investigations. The operator, he's been operating this website since I think 1999. He just, you know, he posts satellite public access, satellite photos and drone images and things like that about Area 51. It's called the Dreamland Resort website. They raided all of his properties, confiscated everything he's got. They said, at least, he said at least 20 of them busted in and, you know, full blown battalion gear. You know, basically knocking his doors down, seizing his laptops. All they would tell him is it has to do with the website. Made his girlfriend go outside in her underwear. Made him go outside in the cold and just sweatpants and a t-shirt, he said. And he said, this was their message to silence, folks. All Things Unexplained, hosted by Dr. Mounts. Let's face it, we were always ready to roll without him anyway. <laughs> CJ Derringer. Ain't nobody perfect, right? And Smitty Neves. I've never planned out hardly anything my whole life. I just free ball. Featuring Cajun Man. Uh, I'm just old nobody, somebody looking for somebody. You're talking about the compartmentalization of these these things. And I go back to World War II. My wife's grandmother worked at Oak Ridge, Tennessee, where they made part of the atomic bomb and had no idea what they were making there. She knew it was important and it was top secret, but she was just uh, way down on the r lower rung of the ladder. And she only found out what they were making when they announced that they dropped the bomb and it was made at Oak Ridge, Tennessee mm. on the radio. So oh my gosh. There are a lot of people involved. They may not have yeah, a clue that's... what they're doing. So we have a, mil a certificate upstairs. In this particular case, I do think that most people involved know that they're building bombers, but they dehumanize it so much <laughs> by making it so compartmentalized that people aren't really thinking about that. Plus, just generally speaking, where I grew up was a very, everybody was pretty like-minded in terms of politics and saw what they were doing as defense rather than warmongering. Um, everybody really saw it as just a way to protect ourselves from other countries. Um, and what you said, Smitty, actually, uh, Kathy Warden of Northrop Grumman had said, and there's a quote here, in many ways we are taking tech from the future and bringing it to the here and now in this aircraft. So obviously they're not reaching into the future yes. and grabbing things. What she is saying is we have a ton of technology that we plan to release to the public 10, 15, 20 years from now that we are using in this particular plane. Yes, and you know, I want to touch real quick again on something Smitty said also. Thank you for bringing that point up, CJ. But this was in the news today about how a former educator warned that teaching as we know it could be facing a dramatic crisis. That teaching as we know it basically could be over. Smitty, you should take this to heart. We might have to change the way we're teaching. 
because there are new there is a new artificial intelligence program out there right now that will write papers for students that will you know compose um, all kinds of things for students and basically do their work for them in ways that are completely undiscoverable hmm. by the teacher and the story said you know, teachers are literally going to have to change the way they teach, the way they give assignments, the way they assess their students, because this new artificial intelligence can basically just do it all for them, all the way down to kindergartners, and that teachers literally have no way of distinguishing what the computer has done from what a student would legitimately do. Now, this... This Kathy Warden of Northrop Grumman talking about the future is here now with this aircraft. I couldn't help but think mm -hmm. about Bob Lazar. And Bob Lazar, he talked about, if you believe Bob Lazar and nobody has discovered any reason not to, he said that the craft he was assigned to reverse engineer that these craft were so far advanced that he likened it to, okay, he was afraid because he likened it to, okay, if one of these craft, if we sent a nuclear bomb back in time to a caveman, the best a caveman could okay. hope to do was kill themselves because they might bang on it, you know, until it went off and, or, they, uh, or they cracked it open. They all died of radiation poison, but they were never going to make their own nuclear bomb. And so he was literally afraid that what he was facing at Area 51 or one of those sites, he was afraid of how advanced the technology was. So I couldn't help but think when, you know, another thing too, I, I'm listening to this book, The Day After Roswell. In it, he talks about how if you read these headlines in the news between these organizations like Northrop Grumman and the military branches, you can read between the lines and see the, like, wink, wink, behind-the-scenes things they're saying. Okay, and I thought as soon as I read that, this is some sort of behind-between-the-lines, <laughs> wink, wink, look at what we've got here, you know? And I'm just going to say it. We need to be up front here. This is all things unexplained. If you believe there was more to Roswell in 1947 than just weather balloons... You have a lot of questions about this new B-21 Raider, and when they say things like, this is taking tech from the future, either Roswell was more than weather balloons and, or it wasn't. And if it was, and, and we did have a group of scientists, military tasked with reverse engineering alien technology, then yeah, <laughs> Kathy Warden, that's a bit of an understatement. I think she might be saying the past. from the future, as in back to the future, 1947. <laughs> Totally. Well, back to the future of your discussion about teachers. It's time for a pop quiz. Who's ready? I'm ready. So some of that, I think, sir, will save for closed session. Does anybody know what makes a stealth bomber stealth? Any takers on that one? Yeah, I know the answer. Hold on. Oh, don't be Googling it. <laughs> Man, well, it's one that has to... It's looking it up. Um, it has to do with the radar deflection and also the uh, outer coating of the plane actually absorbs the radar as well. Yeah, it's paint and coating that absorbs and deflects radar. I think that's insane. Smitty's over there like... <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I was trying not to interrupt Mr. <laughs> J. That's what I was doing. So while I was doing research on this, I found a whole bunch of articles about how people are using this paint on their cars to deflect radar from police officers so they can't be clocked. <laughs> Though I, I doubt it's true. I doubt anybody, any like, you know, plain folk have um, access to this type of paint. Knight Rider, brilliant. But anyhow, you think about, I just, in, in human, te I mean, in, in just technology that we know of, we've gone a crazy crazy way from 1969 to when we put a man on the moon mm -hmm. with computers that were not as yeah. sophisticated as the iPhones we carry around to doing all the things that we do 
Have you seen Sophia the AI? No. She is really kind of creepy. You should YouTube that sometimes. To kind of touch on the uh, on the past a little bit, you know, we had the half blue stuff, uh, stealth technology back in the 50s and 60s. And we just found out about the stealth bombers and they told us about that in what, 1995, I believe? Would it be about right, yeah. I mean, yeah, they're releasing uh, this uh, B-21 now, but we're always 10 and 20 years more advanced than anybody else. So just imagine what we really, mm -hmm. really have got. I mean, this, this is just a show playing compared to what the real technology is. I think you're right there. Yes. So now, in terms of what Northrop Grumman and Air Force have released to us, this B-21 becomes a key part of our U.S. nuclear, gosh, we've heard that word a lot, triad, land, air, and sea launches. And boy, am I sick of the word nuclear. Anybody else? Yeah, I tell you, and the thing is, Smitty and I, CJ, I think you were sick this night. We did a show, and, and it came up, this notion about the term sad mm -hmm. simultaneous atomic destruction of course that was a, a big deal at least during the cold war and you know that's what when i read about that that's what it makes me think of like wow we're talking about dealing from the land to the air and sea launches it also made me think about how all of a sudden the pentagon's uap ufo task force is now openly interested in transmedium entities, entities that are going from space to air to land to water. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Uh, that just se that seems like a big coincidence to me. The fact that we okay are now openly studying unknown craft that have this ability, and here we are unveiling supposedly our newest tech capable of delivering simultaneous atomic <laughs> destruction you know and is it capable of doing it and they made of course they tell you well this is in conjunction with our submarines with our aircraft carriers you know for all we know with space not space wars but with space force i think space wars is defunct now well it is in conjunction they require on they they rely on all of those different entities to tell them where their target is because if you think about it if they're shooting a missile from a thousand miles away they can't see that target even if they're close the earth still curves they need to have satellites they need to have you know um reconnaissance planes essentially out there spy planes telling them exactly where to hit and so it does require submarines, it does require satellites, it does require other airplanes to make it all happen. Well, again, it's like General Corso, who wrote Day After Roswell, and by the way, never retracted any of that information in that book, even on, on to his deathbed. He still never retracted anything he said. And, and, you know, this notion of read between the lines of what you see in the news. And here we have people talking about the capabilities of this thing and it makes you wonder it just seems like there's something out there that is capable of trans medium abilities land air sea is this it like mr j said this probably just is a tip, not even the tip of the iceberg right of what we are capable of and what are the others capable of china what are they capable yeah. of a lot they're capable of a lot, and so are we. I don't think that we're seeing nearly the technology that we're capable of. Also, what are we not being told, right? Everything. If you think about the reason, the purpose for us to have, let's just say, a hundred of these unstoppable... Let me pull up this diagram. This is, this is striking. Mr. J was good enough to send us this diagram. America's new $600 million, that's the estimate, B-21 Raider, and here 30,000 pounds plus of payload. I don't know how many nuclear weapons that is, but I'm going to guess it's a lot. So, if you think about it, it's kind of scary. The reasons why we would need 100 
nuclear capable, unstoppable, potentially transmedium unmanned vehicles to deliver 30,000 pounds plus of payload. We just need one more than the other guy, but 200 more would be nice. Yeah, they're, they're worried about, you know, China and Russia, but I mean, they could also be worried about something coming from the other side of the moon. True. That's a good point. Yeah, I mean, if you think about, okay, this is something that Northrop Grumman and the, Northrop Grumman and the Air Force have been working on for over six years, costs billions of dollars. What do we really, as the public, know about it? Not, we know that it could be manned or unmanned. We know that it could carry a certain number of things. We know that it's stealth. Okay. <laughs> we don't know much. And it can go a little faster than the, the, than the, the stealth bomber. Yeah. It's supposed to be able to hit any target anywhere in the world. We're not being told how. We're not being told what the technology is. Considering how big of an announcement this was, we know nothing. Well, we I think it's safe to assume that they have at least tested prototypes of this. They talked about virtual test. I don't think anybody believes that this thing has only been tested virtually, but it is safe to assume it's been tested at least with prototypes. Now that now these prototypes it's also safe to assume are much smaller i believe i even read that somewhere than what the actual plane itself would be i just wonder how many uap ufo reports are such prototypes responsible for right well you know too um they said that the wings especially the wings are more set back on the airplane you know one that for more maneuverability it's able to to move faster because it's less drag because you don't have the wings farther out so it's got the capability to go fast and maneuver really quickly in the air well it looks super aerodynamic just the the build of it to me right it's very aerodynamic by the way a b-52 payload with seventy thousand pounds is so this payload i think smaller so it can move faster more than likely that's a good point right who knows what our nuclear technology has evolved into let's just say for instance they wanted to drop a nuclear bomb out of this particular uh, aircraft <laughs> they would have to be moving in order for them to get out of the blast radius if it was even possible they would have to be moving it super high rate of speed you just look at what happened in, in nagasaki and hiroshima they you know they were able to escape that blast radius because it wasn't anywhere near what a nuclear weapon would be and even though it was huge blast radius but a nuclear weapon would be much more much larger than than obviously an atomic bomb it just doesn't look that different than the B-2 bomber to me. I'm sure there's a ton of people in aerospace that are like, you know, gasping right now <laughs> that I just said that. But other than the back end, it doesn't look terribly different to me. But I suppose in order to be aerodynamic, there's got to be a lot of similarities. So much goes into building these things. If you look at this diagram that Tim's got up right now, on the that, that last prototype that you've seen, tip of the airplane is actually looks more like a, a beak than it does a, a diamond shape mm -hmm. okay right there in front of the airplane where you see the intake for the end the air intake for the engines those are much mm -hmm. much smaller and the reason for that is too is is they're trying not to cast any type of shadows anything that can be picked up on a radar whatsoever that's why everything is so much smaller and compact right gotcha because yeah you can't paint you can't put paint on the engines <laughs> i mean that's a great point and i was actually reading about the exhaust that they really try to hide the exhaust of these things until the very last second because you know the newton's laws of physics right basically these jets these planes cannot be propelled in one direction without exhaust 
in the other mm-hmm. direction exhaust which by the way gives off heat signatures and other detectable data right so they really try to hide that gosh my astronomy class is making so much more sense right now with my teacher and a children's helmet and a red wagon and a fire extinguisher shooting him across the room well and it, this raises a lot of questions namely i want we wonder how many are the you know ufo uap sightings are these responsible for but a lot of these military encounters they're saying you know these things are de- defying the laws of physics and what they one of the things they mean is changing directions or accelerating with no detectable means of doing so yeah. no detectable exhaust mm-hmm. no heat signatures how is this possible? Technology of the future's past. Yeah, I think it has a lot to do with the way that the wings are, are themselves. I think the exhaust is spit into a lot of the wings to cool down, and then it slowly is let out the back. Well, one very interesting thing on that documentary, A Tear in the Sky, from Amazon, they had multiple cameras set up, and one of these unidentified aerial phenomenon that they were capturing on multiple instruments there was one camera that picked it up okay in a different type of camera and I wish I could remember the difference between the two sitting right next to it looking right at it for whatever reason completely undetected on that camera infrared hmm yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not sure. I, I would have to rewatch it, but they had two different cameras. On one, boom, there it is on the camera. On the next one, it was not there. No data whatsoever of its existence was coming up on the other camera. I wonder what the altitude this plane can achieve would be. I'm sure they won't release that. Is there anything about that, Jay, and the research you did? How high can this plane actually fly? I'm, well, I'm sure that if it's got a lot of the same technology that the, uh, the B-2 does, they can kiss the atmosphere pretty high up. So Palmdale is in Los Angeles County, and there are some very, very strict regulations about painting and paint and how you can dispose of paint. And so many, many members of my family worked on the B-2 bomber. And after it was unveiled, they were allowed to reveal some information, but they used to have to transport the B-2 bomber at night on nights that there was no moon (laughs) and they would cover it and change the shape of it. And then they would drive it to Kern County where there weren't as many laws about paint and paint it there. And then they would bring it back. Yeah. I'm, I'm certain that the laws in Los Angeles County are probably the same or even stricter now. I think, as you mentioned, that was back in the 90s when the B2 bomber came out. And so, I, and, and it might have been that they were transporting it in parts, in like large parts of the plane down there and changing the shape of it. But I, that story really stuck with me when I heard that. Nothing to see here. I mean, can you imagine yeah. seeing this covered thing going down the road and... I mean, the only people that would be traveling this stretch of area in the middle of the night is like your well-worn travelers or people that drive trucks and things like that. You wouldn't have gotten too many just regular people out on the road at three o'clock in the morning. But can you imagine that's your job? Like, oh, I got to load this thing up and drive it 3 a.m. when there's no moon. That would be awesome. You asked me. (laughs) Let's go. (laughs) Well, you know, speaking of the paint and the detectability and the exhaust, it just kept running through my head. What are the odds that this technology powered by artificial intelligence, quantum computing, who, you know, who knows what nanoparticles, what are the, what are the odds it is capable of sending out some sort of holographic type of drones? Can you be more specific? What do you mean by that? Yeah, so just holographic images of 
craft of drones. Let's call it distractions. Oh, just to throw off. Okay. Yeah, right. That's They're not even real, right? No. Oh. All of these leaked videos of UAP encounters by the military have so far been from the Navy. And to me, this is telling. And here we have this news of the new B-21 Raider coming from the Air Force. Oh, look at what we've got at the Air Force. By the way, we never have a UAP encounter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Would the Air Force test their new toys unbeknownst to other military branches? Oh, oh and by the way, unbeknownst to commercial airlines? Absolutely. Yeah, I think that you, I mean, so they're different branches of the same government. Of course, our government wants to make sure that if we have technology that's the best of the best, that our best can figure it out. Just like that story we heard that you are, the your hairstylist told you of her brother on the Navy ship, and all of a sudden all these drones surrounded it and shut down all of their tech, jammed all of their technology, and it was his job to get his ship back online and how stressful that was. Yeah. You got to make sure that our people are top notch, that they're on the top of their game too. That's right. And by the way, that secret military personnel said that there have even been casualties, fatalities from encounters with these UAPs. We have a listener said, so wanted me to clarify, so basically a holographic craft to throw people off. Yes, that's exactly what I'm wondering. If we're dealing with such a futuristic capable vehicle controlled by artificial intelligence you know and it's the air forces would the air force test these things against our own military against our own commercial airlines well i just can't help but wonder if it could if it is capable of projecting false holographic images or data let's just say data right things showing up on radar perhaps invisible to the eye, mm -hmm. things showing up on thermal. Of course, they would have no fear about any mid-air collisions from such things because there would be no mid-air collisions, right? Mm -hmm. But they themselves would be collecting data. Yeah, it's possible. I mean, I think that they're working majorly with laser technology. So, well, yeah, I would believe that a hologram of some sort. But I would also think that... They're working on laser technology, hologram technology, what have you, to interfere with adversaries' technology as well. Oh, yeah. Just look at what these drone swarms are capable of doing. Mm -hmm. Just incredible things. You know, and it has been reported yeah. on Coast to Coast AM and other websites. Just, you know, that one, these drone swarms are capable of much more than we can fathom that we have drones as small as insects that can infiltrate other countries the opposition basically take folks out if need be mm -hmm. what if they're seeing iron man there's been reports of that actually happening tim in uh china one of the uh, political leaders of some sort Somebody had taken a swarm of, of drones and assassinated him in his apartment. Yeah, I, I think mm -hmm. we talked about that a couple of times. And now we all know what murder hornets are. Yeah. Who better to test these things against than other branches of the military who are <laughs> highly adept at spotting those types of things? That's why I think uh, these cameras that have been on these fighter pilots, when they see a UAP, it lends a humongous amount of credit to that actual film because those guys have been to spot enemy aircraft and they pretty much have studied every known available aircraft and when they don't recognize it that lends a lot of credence to the UAP being something that uh, we really can't fathom. Mm -hmm. This was something that Avi Loeb said and I was a little shocked actually at his response when he was on with us. Tim asked him do you think... Excuse me, that that what these pilots are seeing 
are UAP of extraterrestrial origin? What do you think these UAP are? And he said, no, I don't. I think that when they're saying that they defy the laws of physics, that what they actually are saying is that they defy the laws of physics as we understand them, but that somebody else has found a way to work within the laws of physics to make these things work in ways that we've never seen before. And I really expected him to say, yes, I do think that they could potentially be of extraterrestrial origin. But he was adamant that he did not think so, that he thought it was some sort of human created technology that we were seeing. And we do know that he works closely with the Department of Defense. So I think he was giving us a read between the lines build up for this show. I think it's it bears pondering what exactly does human made technology mean if if you buy into <laughs> Roswell being more than just weather balloons if you buy into the possibility that yes Bob Lazar was tasked with reverse engineering alien technology and let's be clear by what that means it means figuring out how this UFO worked so that we could apply it towards our own military objectives. And by the way, that began a long time ago. Of course, Roswell was 1947. If we've had alien technology in our hands since 1947, if you believe we went to the moon in the 60s, just like Smitty said, and now I can hold this iPhone up, it's more powerful than any space shuttle that supposedly went to the moon. Does man-made technology include technology derived from captured extraterrestrial crafts? If the extraterrestrial craft is actually from a former ancient civilization of humans that was far more technologically advanced and created these things before they were wiped off the face of the earth and now it's coming back to us, then yes. Well, and I'll give you another great, a great thing. And I really want to do a show on this sometime. One thing that General Corso pointed out in Day After Roswell, and this was very specific. And so when he pointed it out, I thought, this is, this is great, but also shocking. I'm like, if I hone in on this and do a little bit of research, I can either, I can easily disprove what he's saying here. And General Corso said, one of the things we first reverse engineered after Roswell was night vision goggles. And I thought, you know what? That is going to be so easy to discredit. And I began digging. And I want to know who invented night vision goggles. Where did it come from? The technology. And you know what I quickly discovered? I'm not discrediting General Corso anytime soon. <laughs> because I challenge you, I challenge you to discover the origins of night vision goggles. I'll just say this, so far as we know, they were invented by the entity that took possession of whatever crashed in Roswell, New Mexico, 1947. That is the United States Army. Not one mm. person, not one not one mind, night vision goggle technology, night vision came from your United States Army, and that is as far as you will get, I promise you. Hmm. Well, as per our usual, we've left our listeners with far more questions than answers, but we might have listeners out there that have answers for us. So if anybody knows anything about the B-21 or about the Air Force or about future technology or past technology or Roswell or night vision night goggles, vision. we hope that you will comment or drop us a line. You can visit our website at allthings-unexplained.com. Before we go, any last minute thoughts on the B-21? Smitty, I'm coming to you. I just think, like I said, that it's been around longer than, than they let on because I think that the government does that on a frequent basis. They release things and then they don't release it uh, because of the the consequences that might ensue because of that. You know, and another release of this may be as as we often did during the Cold War, we release knowledge of these weapons that we have to discourage other attacks 
from mm-hmm. outside sources on the United States of America. You know, right. That's what we did during the whole arms race during the Cold War. Mm-hmm. Feels like we're in the Cold War again, doesn't it? And Mr. J, do you think the B-21 is as big of a deal as they're making it out to be? Or do you think that they are trying to pull the wool over our eyes and distract us from what they're really working on? I'd say yes to both. Um, And I think it's potentially, I think they released a lot of it because the tensions with China. I don't think it's completely done yet. And I think it has very, very much, much more superior power and overwhelming power and technology than what we'll probably ever know. Yes, agreed. And Tim, lastly to you, do you think you'll ever finish the book Day After Roswell? I'm going to be sad when I do finish it. It is a lengthy book. I'm really soaking it in page by page. I mean, I'm serious. I'm really processing everything I'm reading here. And not a single thing he's said have I has have I been able to come close to discrediting. I want to say how ironic it is that we have the Pentagon telling us about transparency. We have NASA researching UFOs and UAPs and telling us about transparency. We have the Air Force now raiding civilians' homes for operating websites about area 51 oh but there's nothing to see nothing to see we have fbi raids of bob lazar's homes oh but nothing he says is true right oh but they're raiding his home confiscating everything he's got and his business and his businesses in tim's defense this is the first book he's ever read that didn't have pictures in it so just (laughs) yeah if it takes him a while, just bear with him. He'll get through it. Avi Loeb told us, hey, the head of NASA said he saw classified data and made the hair on the back of his neck stood up. Now, Avi made a little joke about that, but what he said was very profound. He said, you know what, and I think we should all take this take this away. We don't need the classified data, and here's why the skies are not classified. Although you would think from the raid of Bob Lazar's properties and the operator of dreamlandresort.com properties maybe the sky is classified or they would like it to be but guess what the sky is actually not classified folks and we can look up and we can collect data that's why i appreciated this documentary a tear in the sky on amazon because they went out there and they collected data no matter you might interpret it in different ways but what they collected is indisputable. There's things out there we don't know. Maybe it's the B-21 Raider. Maybe it's from another galaxy. Maybe it's from the moon. Who knows? But the sky is not classified, folks. Keep looking up. We can all join in the scientific project that is collecting data on the things we see in the sky. And you know what? we can get to the bottom of this. Especially with everybody's help. So to those that have more information that are tuning in, send it our way. Drop us an email, find us on social media. We would love to hear other people's thoughts. We thank you, Mr. J, for joining us this evening for your insight. And I'm gonna throw it to Smitty to sign us off. Be happy, be strange, and listen to all things unexplained. We'll be back again. Thank you. Thanks to our listeners tonight. We appreciate y'all. Thanks for all the comments. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We would greatly appreciate that. If you're interested in supporting this show, at Bigfoot UFO on Venmo. CJ, good night. Good night. Smitty, good night. Good night. Let me do this one more time since Mounts had the last word. Be happy, oh, come on. be strange, and listen to all things unexplained. <laughs> all right. Have a good night. See y'all. <laughs>
If you liked this podcast, please do give us a five-star rating and leave us a review. If you would like to hear more All Things Unexplained, be sure to follow us wherever you listen to your podcasts. Our show depends on the support of listeners like you. Find us on Venmo under the business accounts at Bigfoot UFO. If you can't get enough of us, please check us out at allthings-unexplained.com. A special thanks to our producer, director, sound mixer, editor, and the man who wears far too many hats. No, seriously, he wears a lot of hats. Dr. Tim Mounts. Without you, we couldn't keep the lights on. Thanks for listening to All Things Unexplained.